What's up guys, Ashton here from Without Code, and welcome back to another widget tutorial. Today we're looking at our text slider widget, which we've actually gotten a lot of requests for as of late. We found that some users were using an image slider with the images removed to serve as kind of a makeshift text-only slider. But thanks to all of your requests, we now have a dedicated text-only slider that offers plenty of styling controls and transition effects, and works great for quotes, testimonials, or anytime you just want to draw some attention to text in a slider on your Without Code website. We've got a couple examples here on the demo, and as you can see, we even have ability to showcase multiple slides at one time, which is pretty awesome. Let's switch over to the builder. I'm sitting here on our stories page of our eyewear store template, and we're going to add a text slider widget in a new row here on this page. So let's dive into the widgets library, scroll down to basics, grab our text slider widget out, and we'll drop it into a new row. Awesome. Now the slider is already sitting really nicely on the page, but you are welcome to adjust the horizontal sizing here with this blue slider. Now the slider widget here will default to whatever the available width in the row is. So if you're dropping this into a full bleed row, you'll probably need to decrease the sizing of it just a bit. The alignment tool is also really helpful here, and you can do that by right-clicking on the widget and selecting left, center, or right alignment here, and it will adjust accordingly. Okay, let's take a look in the widget settings panel. Starting up here with the unique ID, you're just going to want to make sure this is unique if you have more than one widget on the same page. And then next up we have our list items. Now each one of these represents a single slide in the text slider. So to customize, we'll just need to click into a list item. And then we're free to enter all of our desired text. Slide title, we can put something like perfect for summertime. And then beneath that we've got our title link. So give a click to this if you want to attach a hyperlink to the slide title. And when doing so, you've got all the same linking options that you would normally have with any other element in Without Code. And then beneath that, we've got the description text. So for now, I'm just going to leave this as the default lorem ipsum for now, but enter anything you want here. Same goes for description link. You can configure that here as well. Now, really quick, let me click into these other two list items just so we have some varying titles to show here in the editor as we're watching it. For number two, I'm going to put best glasses ever. And for number three, let's put act now. Perfect. Next option is slides to display at once. Now this gives you the freedom, as we saw in the demo, to display multiple slides at the same time. Now there are certain transition options that are only going to support one at a time, and I'm going to cover that in a second, but if you do want multiple slides shown simultaneously, this is where you're going to set that. And then we've got some toggle options. So loop slides, this enables the slider to continue looping after the last slide has been shown. Centered slides, this setting allows you to achieve that carousel style of slider where you have one slide centered in the widget and then the other two on either side of it are partially shown. So if we toggle this on, you're just going to want to make sure that the number of slides displayed at once is an even number, such as two or four. And finally, options here to enable navigation arrows on the far left and right of the slider, as well as pagination dots beneath the slider. Slide transition settings, let's click into that. You've got your transition direction and speed, as well as the transition effect that you can select from a dropdown here. So quick note that slide and cover flow effects are the ones that are compatible with showing multiple slides at once. And finally, autoplay settings. You can configure these settings here if you want the slides going automatically, including settings for the speed, direction, and whether or not you want it to stop on the last slide. Let's toggle on autoplay and we'll bump up the delay just a bit to 4,000 milliseconds. Okay, let's jump into the design section of the settings panel. There are quite a bit of settings here and a bit too extensive to cover each one in this tutorial, so feel free to peruse them. Most of them are very self-explanatory, so I'm sure you're not gonna have any trouble. They're separated out here covering different sections of the slider itself. I do, however, wanna go into the title styling and bump up the font size to something like 30, just so it pops out a bit better on the page. Now, like I said, these options are pretty exhaustive, but give you lots of control over the slider, so dive in and play around. There are a couple small things I do want to point out, however, before we close out of the video. So let's talk about spacing. When you're designing the layout of your slider, you may be challenged by the proper alignment of things, like the title, description, etc. So just keep in mind that you may need to adjust multiple spacing parameters, which are found in these different sections of the widget options. All of these settings together work in unison to achieve the full control of the element spacing. So the primary spacing options that you should need can be found in the slider container styling, where you can see a variety of spacing parameters at the bottom here, as well as description styling with two spacing settings available here for descriptions, navigation arrow styling where you can set their size and margin spacing here, 
And finally, pagination dot styling, where you've got the size and dot spacing here as well. Another note I want to make is about the navigation arrow styling. In addition to the standard arrow styling options, this section offers positioning control of the arrows. Now the center vertically toggle is on by default, and this centers the arrows within the container vertically. Now if you find that the arrows don't seem to align where you want them, you may use the top spacing setting to manually set the height of the arrows vertically, and you can access this by toggling off the center vertically option. In really loose terms, we like the arrows to be centered with the description text, especially when the pagination dots are used. So depending on how your slider is set up, you may just need to move the arrows manually to achieve the look that you want. And last but not least, as a general note here, if you're setting up your slider and you see that something looks weird or looks broken on the page, this can happen when you're making significant changes to the slider, especially since the editor is working so hard to reflect your changes here in real time. So when you make changes to things like transition effects or number of slides, transition direction, etc., you may want to give the browser a refresh. This will reset the slider in your editor and preview and fix those issues right away. So that's our text slider widget for without code. We definitely hope this adds some versatility and convenience to your site builds. If you have any issues or concerns at all, hit us up in support at wocode.com and we'll be glad to help you further. Thanks again, and we'll catch you in the next video.